Alright, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Uh Peace and blessings to uh, the elect Akim out there, pushing this word and truth into sincerity. And uh, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. Um, this lesson is going to be about how the uh, so-called Irish are Israelites, you know? This is an article called The Secret History of the Word Cracker. Because, um, you know, pe <laughs> well, really most people think uh, that the term cracker was it is just used as a racial slur to so-called white people because crackers are white. But really that's not true. And then, well, actually, and then uh, some people that do a little research um, think that it goes back to the uh, slave days when Esau was cracking whips on the uh, Negroes and his slave owners. But if you do even more research, like I did, um, it says Cracker, the old standby of uh, Anglo insults, was first noted in the mid 18th century, making it older than the United States itself. It was used to refer to poor whites, particularly uh, those inhabiting the front frontier regions of Maryland, Virginia, and Georgia. It is suspected that it was a shortened version of whip cracker, uh, since the manual labor they did involved driving livestock with a whip. Uh, not to mention the other brutal uh, arenas where those skills were employed. Over the course of time, it came to uh, represent a person of lower caste or criminal dis uh, disposition. In some instance, was used in uh, reference to bandits and other lawless folk. You know, so it's actually a byword and a proverb uh, to <coughs> uh, poor, poor settlers in the South. Um, Continuing, but it turns out crackers roots go back even further than the 17th century all the way back to the age of Shakespeare at least The meaning of the word has changed a lot over the last four centuries Said Dennis st. Clair a Florida a Flor a Florida historian and anthropologist who studies crackers, you know, it says he literally wrote a book on them. He's got a book you click on the link and it goes into the history of uh, cracker history it's called cracker the cracker culture in Florida history because I mean you can google uh, Georgia, Georgia crackers and uh, Florida crackers you know that's basically where the whole southern culture came up from um, St. Clair pointed me to King John published sometime in the 1590s one character refers to another as a cracker you know that was in the 1590s a common insult for an obnoxious uh bloviator you know and a bloviator is like someone getting political just because they're in a higher stature even though they don't know anything uh, what they're talking about, like Eminem, when he did that, uh, uh, the whole rap about Donald Trump, you know, he, he doesn't know anything about politics, but he knows a little bit something about, uh, you know, rapping and taking people's flaws and putting them into a rap and, you know, roasting. Donald Trump is a bolivator if you think about it. Um, but this is a quote from that book. What cracker is this uh, saying that deafs our ears with this abundance of superfluous breath? Um, it's a beautiful quote, but it was a character trait that was used to describe a group of Celtic immigrants, Scots, Irish people who came to the Americas who were running from political circumstances in the old world, St. Clair said. The Scots-Irish folks started settling 
the Carolinas and later moved deeper south into Florida and Georgia. You know, so <clears throat> it was originally a term to describe uh, the the poor white people. You know, they're, they're, we were just crackers. Because that's, that's how uh, English, the English people look at the Irish, especially the nor Northern Irish, Irish, where that's where you get into the Wells and uh, uh, Scotland and all that. Because <laughs> if you do history, you're going to see that, you know, they beefed with them a lot. But, uh, you know, it lines up with scripture too, just to prove that they're Jake. Uh, this is Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Thou shalt become a, uh, an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. You know, you know, no, he didn't lead, he didn't lead all the all the uh, Jake out there to to West Africa. So you're not gonna have all all Jake that's looking dark skin. He drove him across the word world. Um, let's see, I got another article. Let me see if there's more on uh, this, though. There were baseball teams called the Crackers. Yeah, it, it says that they, they took it on as like a as like a term of endearment, you know, like <clears throat> like it was originally, uh, you know, as a derogatory term. Then like they started calling each other Crackers. I mean, doesn't that sound like so-called niggers today? They call each other niggers. What's up, my nigga? It's the same thing, man. Same shit, just different air freshening. Um. It says, those, uh, it was in the late 1800s then writers from the north started referring to the a hayseed faction of southern homesteaders as crackers. These writers decided that they were called that because of the cracking of the whip when they drove slaves, St. Clair said. But he said that few crackers would have owned slaves. They were generally too poor. That, of course, doesn't mean they weren't participants in the South slave economy in other ways. Yeah, because if you do your history, you know, uh, I mean, shit, uh, you know how it goes that he, he, uh, Esau separated the dark skinned uh, Negroes and he put them in the, uh, in the fields and then he, he, he took the light skinned Negroes and uh, put them in the houses. But what did he do with the, with the white niggers, man? He, he put them over, uh, uh, over the slaves. You know, just like today, he, he gives, uh, you know, and he does that to separate to uh, to have that white supremacy, you know, it, it puts that carnal look on things, you know, because it was prophesied that, um, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, your eye would be turned evil towards your brother, and he does that, and Esau did that through uh, skin color, you know, just because they look different, uh, you know, they they're not the same anymore. But in reality, the Irish used to live in the same neighborhoods as uh, as Judah, dark-skinned Negroes. But uh, you know, he, he <laughs> and not not all the time were uh, Irish uh, over, like not a hundred percent of the time the Irish were over the Negroes in the slave in the uh, slave economy. I mean, if you watch Django, the the <clears throat> dark skin uh, that one dark skin dude was set over slaves too. 
you know, there's probably, <clears throat> and a lot of times, like if you, if, if you uh, go to a restaurant today, it'll be like a so-called white dude, probably a Jake though, you know, he'll be a manager of a business, but a lot of the times when their their boss comes in, you know, you, you know, that manager is, you know, having to work with the uh, employees to get shit going. When, uh, when a bunch of customers come in, like he's, he's working there right with the slaves. You know, just because he has that title and makes a little bit more money, you know, it's, don't make him not a Jake. You know, he's still got that Jake uh, spirit and he's still under the Jake curses. You know, just because he makes a little bit more bread doesn't make his, <laughs> it makes his uh, pockets or the holes in his pockets a little bit bigger. You know, more more money, more problems. Um, let's see, I had another article. Come on now. It says that English in general found Celtic ways bar uh, barbarous and disgusting. They spoke of Scotland, Ireland, and Wales as frightful places and of Celtic people as being wicked, savage, and in indolent drunkards. You know, savage was a term uh, for the so-called Native Americans, man. Yeah, and it, it <laughs> approve another point, man. I... Uh, there's a lot of Gad spirits still down here in the south. You know, he didn't drive all Gad uh, west. He just drove uh, drove the uh, uh, Gadites west that uh, that looked, you know, had that uh, different look to him. You know, because you know there's dark skinned Gadites still in the south, and there's Got eyes that look like white dudes still in the south, but that whole the whole southern culture, the Bible Belt southern uh, culture, you know, that's just another nigger culture given to us down here in the south. Because I mean, instead of instead of uh, putting spinning rims on an Escalade, you know, these Irish Jakes, you know, they jack their trucks up, four wheel drives up to as high as they can and put mud tires on them. And put uh, light bars on them. And they crank uh, country music as loud as they can instead of uh, Lil Wayne and shit like that. You know, it's just same shit, different air freshener. And uh, this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 38. Thou shalt carry much seed uh, out into the field and shalt gather but little in. For the uh, locust shall consume it. You know, thou shalt plant uh, vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, uh, for the worms shall eat them. You know, because <clears throat> uh, it is prophesied that uh, famine were, were going to hit Jake's. And if you uh, go into the Irish history, there's a potato famine, you know, and, um, you know, that, that caused a lot of immigrants to come over. And when they came over, they're working blue-collar jobs, you know, building skyscrapers, you know. You know, Jake, Jake built this country up. Whether they're, you know, it doesn't matter their skin color. Man, all, all Jakes were, were, you know, put in slavery in here in one form or another. You know that. <laughs> now I encourage brothers to do a little bit more research on that. I didn't go fully into it like I wanted to, but uh, that I'm gonna say all praises to you. How about Shunyashai? Shalom.